Welcome back everyone. President Donald Trump is already shaking up his National Security Council less than two months after reorganizing it. CBS has confirmed Chief Strategist Steve Bannon has been removed from the council. This comes after Lieutenant General Mike Flynn was ousted as a National Security Advisor and replaced by Lieutenant General H.R. McMaster. Joining me now by phone is Fran Townsend, CBS News National Qu Security Consultant. Sorry about that. Thanks a lot for joining us, Fran. Sure. Good to be with you. All right. First of all, uh, can you explain for our viewers who are watching and listening what the National Security Council does and who's on it? Okay. So the National Security Council is, there's a staff of the National Security Council. You have a National Security Advisor, that's now H.R. McMaster, and he has a staff of folks, most of whom are what we call detailed, basically borrowed from other agencies, State and Defense Department, who work on policy issues to prepare the President to make decisions. The Council itself is composed of a Principals Committee. What is that? That's the Secretaries of State and Defense, the Attorney General, this is where the, the, it's the final step in the policy process to make recommendations to the president. There's also members of the president's staff who, who sit, the national security advisor, for example. The vice president sits as a part of it. Um, early on in the, in the Trump administration, the document sort of naming who would sit on it named Steve Bannon to sit as a part of that. Um, it also removed the director of national intelligence and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, who have traditionally uh, sat on the National Security Council and sat in on meetings. Um, this document kind of goes back and redoes who will act formally sit as part of the council. And so Steve Bannon will no longer formally sit as a member of the National Security Council. That is when they sit in meetings. But I don't think we should read too much into this because, frankly, while it was odd to have him as a named principal member, the president can have anybody in the room he wants. And so we ought to presume that Steve Bannon is still going to be able to sit in on those meetings and, and be a part of them. He's just not a formal council member any longer. But, friend, what does it say about the, uh, the latest uh, shakeup? What does this indicate now that he has been removed? You know, it's not clear. I mean, I think that part of this, we ought to, we, we all expected that there might be some restructuring when H.R. McMaster was named. Um, you have a new national security advisor come in, and, and he has a, he's running the council. He's running the policy process. That's his responsibility. And I think we ought to expect that he was going to have a view, perhaps different from General Flynn, his predecessor, about who ought to participate in these meetings and how the process ought to be run. And I, so I I think so, in some ways this is an inside Washington kind of baseball game, right? This is who sits where and who attends what meetings has more to do with Washington than it has to do with kind of the American people who care about outcomes. So tell us, what was the initial response in the national security community to Bannon's appointment and uh, what's the response now that he's out? You know, I think the initial, re the initial reaction when Bannon was formally named was a little bit of dismay. Um, look, I can say during the, um, uh, the George W. Bush administration, uh, you know, it was not at all unusual to have folks from the president's political staff sit in on these meetings. They weren't formal participants. So it was just sort of dismay because if he wanted him there, he could have had him there without actually formally putting him on the council. This sort of feels more more traditional, more what folks are used to. Um, look, President Obama had Valerie Jarrett sit in on many of these meetings. And so political advisors often do sit in on them. It's, it was dismay initially when he formally named them because that was what was odd. This now is much more reverting to what we recognize as a traditional national security process. And a final question for you beyond the politics. Uh, do you think this could change the nature of the advice the president gets from the NSC? I don't think so. I mean, H.R. Uh, McMaster is an absolute professional. He, Tom Bossert remains running the counterterrorism and cyber. He is a, an absolute experienced professional. And so I think that the folks the president's getting the advice from is more important than how it's structured. And all those people remain kind of qualified, competent, and, and very accomplished folks in their own right. All right, CBS News National Security Consultant, Fran Townsend. Fran, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.